by the banks of a stream A hermit whose prayers chose applause for their theme He gazed at the flowers and he smiled at the sun Then he clapped with delight, Lord, he cried, oh, well done Well done, Lord, oh, very well done The mountains that laugh with the gypsy clouds The fields smile to welcome the sun All nature sings praises aloud The fields smile to welcome the sun All nature sings praises aloud The trees dance to show their elation A day on God's earth has begun And every true heart in creation In speechless wonder is bowed And every true heart in creation In speechless wonder is bowed Well done, Lord, oh very well done The joy that you've planted in children's hearts The thrill known in bearing a son The hope when a trial departs The thrill known in bearing a son The hope when a trial departs The gladness of men in their neighbors Of youth in its victories won Our joys are the proof of your labors How wonderful, Lord, are your arts Our joys are the proof of your labors How wonderful, Lord, are your arts Well done, Lord, oh, very well done At last I discovered the mystic key The world's joy, O oh, secretive one Replies to your sweetness in me The world's joy, O oh, secretive one Replies to your sweetness in me For here in my heart lies the answer Your love shedding light like the sun All life seems to leap like a dancer When gazing I see only thee All life seems to leap like a dancer When gazing I see only thee In seeking, in seeking success, which is one way of putting what we're all looking for, We'd like to succeed in the search for what we're all seeking. The secret of this success is to understand that there are, that success begins where you are. It begins with your own dharma. It begins, that is to say, with the, the lessons you have to learn with the way that God wants to play through you in this great symphony of life. The song that he wants to sing through you It begins with that. You cannot... It's better, as it says in the Bhagavad Gita, better to fail doing your duty, your own duty, than to succeed in someone else's. It's better to, to try to meet that challenge and fail than it is to avoid that challenge and pick up on someone else's, usually an easier one. For example, Einstein had a mission to fulfill. But he could have been a very good bookkeeper. And uh, uh, supposing he hadn't found the law of relati relativity, would it have been better for him to be a bookkeeper? No. Because if he hadn't found it in this lifetime but strived for it, then sooner or later, maybe in another lifetime, he would have reached it. Supposing Mozart, in a previous lifetime, had not yet developed the ability to become what we know him as. Supposing he had felt the inspiration to write music, but there were other better musicians around him, and he decided that, well, this was no way to get rich and make a living and the heck with it. And he was going to go out and just sort of uh, uh, be a barker at a sideshow or something. Well, that wouldn't have been his duty. It was something that the divine pointed, appointed him through his own desire. That's how it works, really. Through your deep-seated desire, the divine can work to achieve a particular kind of expression. And so, he could have been a successful barker, maybe, 
and never become a musician, but there would have been this deep sense of disappointment inside, that there was something that he hadn't done because he didn't have the courage to take up that task. Many times people are called to some particular task in life, and many times that task is rather frightening, because if we have any kind of courage at all, the task that the divine appoints to us and through us is going to be something that requires reaching out for the stars. It's not going to be something easy. And if we say, oh, this is terrible, I don't want to do that, I just want to live a normal life. And so we go back to living the way worldly people live. Ramakrishna had a lovely image that way. He spoke about the, the fish that are caught in the net, and they think that they're escaping the fishermen by burrowing deeper in the mud not realizing that the net is taking up the mud too. And they're just burrowing but still caught. The wise fish will be that which jumps over the net into the sea. And so people will burrow down deeper and deeper into their little delusions and think that they're escaping that terrible call to higher duty. When we speak of success then, we mean success in this higher way. We mean that success which embraces our highest calling, both as souls, and that success means to unite with God, and as individual expressions, uh, as individual egos, we could say, that call to fulfill some real challenge in this lifetime. And if we don't choose that challenge, if we don't choose that which will make us reach for the stars, if we're cowards, in other words, and that's all it amounts to, then we may live a comfortable worldly life, but we will never be happy in our hearts. We can't be because we've cheated ourselves of the expectation that we were born with. We've cheated ourselves of that thing that we knew we had to do. So your real goal, your real destiny in life, is something that you need to find deep inside yourself. And it'll be different for each person. And for some people it will be less uh, glamorous than others. But it should be a difficult challenge. Those people who think of it in simple terms haven't understood it. Because do you realize what a difficult challenge it is to do anything really well? Any job that you have, to do it really well sets you apart from 99.9% of the human race. What an inspiring talk by Swamiji. <clears throat> we'll continue with this theme now, achieving your goals. Last week we covered these topics. Pick the right goal, work with positivity and energy, and make a plan. This week, I want to talk about, first of all, building a team. Everything at Ananda was built from teams, working together, people doing projects together. I remember so many times doing uh, Rajasi Day, which is at Ananda, helping to beautify the community. Even Swamiji would come out. Everybody would be doing the different seva projects and so joyful. I remember so many times traveling around Europe with groups of uh, singers and we would sing in different venues and sing in Assisi in front of the churches. And, and that team, that group magnetism, it draws to you much more than if you were working on your own. <clears throat> and, but building your team is so important Choose people who are, if you can, magnetic, who are energetic, who have ideas, who are inspired, who you can work with well, um, and make your team uh, like a dream team. Make it very strong. <clears throat> I was thinking of um, yesterday. It was raining a lot here in, in Delhi, but I just thought, I want to be with my team. <laughs> I want to be together with them, not on Zoom. So we got there. We said, let's meet together. We meditated together, did an affirmation together, and then had a meeting. And try to do things that way as much as you can with a lot of energy in your team. And treat the people on your team well. Uh, thank people, be gracious, 
Um, or you'll find that there's nobody there who wants to work with you. There's nobody behind you. You have all these ideas, but you don't have a team. So I remember Swamiji said, kindness, thanking people, gratitude, it's a sign of refinement. And uh, so if somebody does something well, thank them, tell them, show some sign that you're supportive, you're encouraging to your team. Team building means that building, not just giving somebody a job to do, but take care of your team, take them out to lunch, whatever you can do. But as you do that, I think Swamiji was the, a master at team building and he created things for people to do just to get teams going so people could work together and people could achieve much more. The second point is be harmonious and cooperative. Now this is difficult <laughs> at times, I know, but I remember um, we had our, our publishing company, Ananda Village, it's called Crystal Clarity. And at the beginning of that, um, Swamiji had Crystal Clarity, but the staff was always, oh, no, I want this. No, I don't want to do this. And they just couldn't get along. Swamiji said, you will have no magnetism, won't be able to sell any books until you learn how to cooperate. Be harmonious, work together. And anytime you see people coming in and trying to cut somebody else off, cut this person down, uh, say negative things, and really work at being cooperative. I know it's difficult, but we have to learn. It's, it's a spiritual principle to be harmonious and to cooperate with others. And if you find uh, that nobody wants to be with you, it's probably because you're not cooperative and harmonious. Uh, so work on that. That will really help you to be to achieve your goals. If you yourself meditate on being harmonious, don't go in the negative and uh, I don't like this, I don't want to do this. And some people are so grouchy, you just don't want to be around them. So be harmonious and work at being cooperative, not going against the grain all the time. Okay, the next one <clears throat> is do what you say you're going to do. Now, this is, these are big, take one of them and work on it. But I, as you know, I've kidded about this. I hope I don't have to do it. But i I always say I'm writing the book of excuses because I've heard so many. Oh no, it's raining. Oh no, it's too hot. Oh no, this happened. Oh no. It goes on and on and on. Just tell yourself what I say I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. Even Swamiji, if he said he's going to buy a newspaper and somebody brought a newspaper, he said, let's go anyway. We can do something else, but let's go in the direction of what I said I was going to do. And so you, you lose so much magnetism when you make excuses. Oh, I'll definitely be there. Oh, I want to do it. I, I will do it. And don't be vague. Being vague. I remember um, recently at a meeting, <laughs> someone was saying, oh, yes, yes, Yanagi, we're going to do it. We'll do this and that, whatever they were saying. And I said, listen, you need paper and I held up paper. You need paper and you need a pen and you need to write these things down. And so for all of us, write it down, put it on your altar if you need to, affirm it, confirm it, whatever. But if you do what you say you're going to do, you your word will have power. If your word has power, your seva will have power. If you keep saying things that you don't do, you won't have the power to achieve your goals. That's just the way it is. And so these things poke holes in your aura. So be firm, say what you want, say what you're gonna do, and my goodness, actually do it. Another one is don't lower your standards. So uh, yeah, before I go to that, when I had this great uh, example from my own life, from when we were, coming back, living in Italy to living in America, Swamiji had this big talk in the Bay Area in Palo Alto. And he said, oh, you all should come to the talk. Now, my goodness, if we had to delay the flight and the, the flight, it was gonna cost a lot more. Um, there were a lot of problems with it. So 
you know, I thought, well, Swamiji won't even know we're not there. So we didn't go. We didn't come early enough from Europe to attend the program. Whoa, was I wrong? Swamiji met us at the airport and he said, where were you? And I said, well, Swamiji was going to cost $200 more and it was going to cost this. And, we were, and he just said, I don't want to hear it. You should have been there. And I, from that, I was always there. Whatever he said, I would just get there. I said I was going to do it. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. And so it's a spiritual principle. Try to live by that. Nextly, don't lower your standards. Cutting corners, that doesn't work. Uh, hoping somebody doesn't know, changing the story, exaggeration. <laughs> There's so many things, but uh, don't lower your standards. I, I remember in the early days when we had to deal with the, uh, our visas at the police station. <laughs> I would mean, go there every year, and um, it was not a happy experience. But anyway, I remember many times people just waiting for something. I mean, the officials, and I didn't know what they were waiting for. They wouldn't give the visa. And the, Finally, people would say, uh, our people would say, well, they're waiting for a bribe. I said, oh, forget it. I'm not going to do that. We got our visas, but I wasn't going to lower my standards and give people money to do their job. And so be aware and be conscious and use divine power to get what you want, not, oh, I'll just do this and I'll do it that way. It doesn't work. In the long run, you lose. And uh, I was thinking also of this incident that happened where Swamiji had told this lady, Ananda person, you many years ago to set up the slideshow for him. He had slides, many slides from all over the world. It was a big event at Ananda. And she didn't give herself enough time. She haphazardly put it together, raced to do it. And it was a total disaster. Wow. That was not good. Swamiji said, what? I knew that was going to happen. Why didn't you take the time to do it properly? And so everything you do, try to really don't say, oh, I, I don't have time, so I, I won't do the assignment. Oh, I won't go to the class. Oh, uh, uh, you know, I'll make up some story. It doesn't work. If you keep, keep your standards high, then you always have energy flowing. And um, I was reading something the other day, just yesterday, of a woman who is 82 years old. Now get this, because I've been thinking of the Olympics and I've seen a couple of the races and all the different things. And I thought, God, how hard people train to get a gold medal or silver medal or even get to the Olympics. But I read another story of this woman who's 82 years old who got her, get this, black belt in karate at 82 years old. Now she was 68 when she started working to get it, but she got it and they had an article about her in the news. And I thought, isn't that wonderful? She just kept going and kept going until she got it. And people say, oh no, it's too much trouble. Oh, I don't feel like doing it. And then you think of Wally Funk who just went into outer space with Bezos, she was eight, she's 82 years old. She's been flying since, since she was 20 years old. Her goal was always to go into space. And because of politics, she wasn't able to go, but she went. And so don't say, oh, it'll never happen. Oh, I don't want to do it. Oh, I don't put the energy. Keep going. And you'll find that you achieve your goals. Finally, give back. Now, what I mean by giving back is give back energy, but also give back financially. If you have a business or a venture and you're always worried about what you're going to get, okay, I, I, don't, I don't have any money to give out to any charity, to anybody. I don't know. No, I won't do it. You're going to fail. That's all there is to it <laughs> because that doesn't work. You have to complete the circle. And I remember a man who uh, he's a husband of one of the members at a store, has a store, and that store was failing. The business, all, it's really all over India, was failing. So what did he do? I loved it. He invited Swamiji to the store. Swamiji went to the store. He said, Swamiji, get whatever you need for your house, for the ashram, 
that was a super shopping day, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and, then, and then I loved when we went out, Swamiji says, so nice to shop when you don't have to pay for anything. I, anyway, it was really fun. But ever since then, it's been the same. Now that man's business is booming because he gives to Ananda repeatedly, whatever you all need, just let me know, I'm happy to help. Think about giving a tithe to whatever the source of your inspiration is, give to others in some way. If you hold back, I've seen it in Ananda Village. Many times we had to give, give, and we didn't have anything. We had to give for this project, give for that problem. The people who gave always were taken care of and happy. The people who didn't, for the most part, they're not there anymore. So, so always remember, generosity creates a magnetism, and that magnetism will help you to achieve your goals. Now, I'd like to go into a couple of questions that we have now. I'll call Nitendra on the screen. Thank you, Nyanaji. I'll just put up the questions. Okay. And the first one is, things never come to me easily. Mm. I seem to always have to work hard and sometimes there are blocks to success. It seems like others get things done and achieve success much more easily. Why could that be? Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. One is your own karma is there. And you look at the other person and they might, the other thing is you might look at a person and say, oh, they're successful. You don't know their life. How do you know? They might be successful in one area, area. their health might be bad, their family relations may be terrible, their children may be ill. We don't know anybody else. We're not in their shoes. So it might look like success. I remember Swamiji used to quote this all the time about Howard Hughes an American uh, millionaire years, years, years back, does, uh, dozens of years. At the end of his life, someone asked him, well, are you happy now that you've made so much money? He says, no, I'm not happy. <laughs> he said, it looks like people are happy. They have a glamorous kind of life. And, but it's not that way, typically. There's a lot of problems that people have. And so if it seems like it comes easily to them, that's their karma for you. You have to work hard, harder, but you will achieve, you will learn the lessons you need to learn, as Swamiji was saying on that talk, and you will achieve your goals. So don't compare yourself with other people, do the work. And if you work hard, put out the effort, greater the will, greater the flow of energy, greater the magnetism, greater the inspiration, you can achieve your goals. You may need to work harder, but then it may be like, Sahaja later, it may be just flowing for you. And so uh, I've certainly had to work hard, but I, I don't know one Ananda person who didn't work hard. I don't know anybody who sat on the couch and was successful. So put out the energy, don't, uh, there's so much energy in our whole existence and we're using so little, there's so much brain power, we're using so little and so use more, put out more, and you'll find that after a while, it's like you've got your sail up and the wind comes and it's just whoosh, pushing you along and you have clear sailing, maybe for a while, maybe for a long time. So don't judge by, don't compare yourself to others. Thank you, Dhananji. The next question builds up on the work hard part that you just mentioned. Oh. It is, I feel very exhausted most of the time and yeah. I would want to take the easy way out and not really work hard. I seem to get so little this was, but at least I don't have to struggle as much. Is it okay? Oh, that's interesting. Well, that's one way of putting it. Well, if you want little, do little. I always put it that way. If you want more, do more. If someone's going to run a marathon, and there's some great runners, I, I love sports personally, and boy, did they put out a lot of energy to be successful. You think of the great scientists, boy, they put out so much energy. You think of like Swamiji used that, Swamiji used that example of Einstein if he had become a bookkeeper. I mean, it would have been a total waste. You think of the great musicians and how much they put out 
to make it happen. I think of Swamiji, he was constantly, he said, I feel like I'm sitting on a volcano. There's so many ideas, there's so much inspiration. And he was, you sit in the room with him, you couldn't help but be inspired. And he would be pointing to you, why don't you do this? Help me with that, here's another project. And so <clears throat> you have to think what Master said, uh, my blessing's there, God's blessing is there, it's your blessing that needs to be there. And also to one man, he said, what do you, he said, this man said, master, I can't do it because you can do it. You're a master. And he said, what do you think made me a master? Put out the energy, do it. And I see people, young people, and they're sitting around just looking at their phone. I go, man, get a life. You <laughs> I've got so much to do in life. And uh, somebody just behind the television all day. My goodness, there's so much to do. Be creative, use your initiative, write poems, write music, sing. There's so many things. And I, I find so much joy from um, these, uh, from talks. And God, a lot of my time goes into just preparing, but I just feel more and more joy just welling up in me because there's so many ideas. And I know they're not my ideas, they come from Divine Mother and Master. But to have those flowing through you, you just feel uplifted. So if you want to be successful, happy, energetic, magnetic, that magnetism draws to you opportunities, people in your life, better finances, prosperity, better health. If you want it, you have to work for it. It may seem like for a while you don't work for it and then, uh, it goes down and you lose it. That's what happens. But if you continuously every day, get up, put your, get your energy going, get meditate and ask master, what do you want me to do today? I'm awake and I'm ready. And if you do that, he gives you ideas and call this person, go do this. But um, let's put it this way to put a fine point on it. It's part of our path and our teachings to be awake and ready and to put out energy. It's part of our spiritual path. You cannot avoid it. The last question. Last one, Dianaji, is my spiritual goals are more important to me than the worldly ones. I want to meditate all day and forget the world, but I do have a wife and two children. So what should I do? <laughs> you know, when I first came here to India, people told me, you're so happy because you don't have to do anything. I said, what? <laughs> I said, all you do is chant OM all day. I said, you have no idea what my life is like. You know, we were traveling all over India all the time. There's a gazillion projects going it's the same now. And the thing is, you can't just say, I want to meditate all day. You know, let me just tell you why. Because you can't. <laughs> <laughs> if you could, you would be in a cave in this lifetime, but you can't. So Master said, okay, I'll give you all these seva projects. I'll give you a center to go to. I'll give you people. I'll give you guru bars. I'll give you books. I'll give you views. I'll give you everything, but meditate. Get a spiritual life where you are. Spiritualize everything you do. So you meditate and you take that vibration, that consciousness, those ideas, that inspiration, that energy, magnetism to your work, into your work. And I mean, I was at many meetings with Swamiji where he was saying, okay, what are the ideas? What do people want to do? And to say, gee, I don't know. <laughs> that was not acceptable. And that's why I challenge people here. Well, what do you want to do? What is your ideas? What are your thoughts about it? Get organized. Think about it gee, I don't know what to do. Well, do something about it. And so if you want to get, get home, I remember that one story, I'll close with this, is Swamiji met this man in Canada and he said, my spiritual life begins when I come home from work and I take my bath, I put on a, my dhoti and I go and meditate. And Swamiji thought, what a wasted day. What a wasted day. What about the rest of your day? Your whole day should be joyful. It should be full of energy, full of master's ideas. And no matter where you work, you can't say, no, I work at a factory, so I don't master doesn't come. <laughs> I think you're not there. Master can come to you anywhere. 
And so just put, put the energy out and feel. No matter what you do, married, unmarried, kids, no kids, whatever the situation, in health and not in good health, whatever. Keep trying. And then we'll be like what uh, Lady Mashaya said, banat, banat banjai. In our spiritual life, in our material life, in our whole life. This is what we want. Banat, banat, banjai. Jai, and God bless you all. Jai, Guru. Thank you.